Alright, this is Flug, and I'm the main developer of this uh, Sop with Camel. Uh, it, it's the uh, JSP Sim uh, Flight Dynamics model that I've been working on, and uh, the idea is to make it the most realistic possible uh, flight dynamics model for the Sop with Camel, and, and incorporate every characteristic that this uh, aircraft was. Uh, reported to have by the people who flew it. So what I'm going to do is make a few, a little series of videos that um, basically just demos the camel and what it does and how it works and why it's like different from well, other aircraft, but particularly modern aircraft that, that we're used to flying, uh, whether you're a, a real pilot or whether you're a, a flight gear pilot. So um, Let me just show you uh, a couple of the things, and, and these, these are things, and then and then we'll go into a little more detail later. But um, the first thing you'll notice, like if you take your hand off the controls, that uh, it's ta tail heavy, and this is actually by design. <coughs> the fuel tank was um, in the rear, and when it was full, um, it would make it a little tail heavy. Now at the end of your flight, if you've run most of the uh, fuel out. Um, then it would become a little bit nose heavy, but for most of your flight it was probably more tail heavy. But you do have to watch out for that as it will change. And then the other thing is that it uh, has just a little bit of a uh, uh, a tendency to go to the left and that's just because of the torque of the engine. So you have to counteract that with just a little bit of right rudder. And you can see one reason I'm using the heads-up display in these uh, videos is you can see my rudder position uh, right down here. And so you can kind of see what I'm doing. So you need just a little bit of right rudder, and that's exactly what pilots uh, reported uh, using in the real camel. And then a little bit of down uh, joystick, uh, forward joystick a little bit of down elevator to keep it level. So this is uh, an aircraft that you actually have to fly all the time. You can't just sit back and just let her, uh, you know, go straight and steady. Um, if you let it go, you know, you're likely to find yourself uh, falling into like a stall and a right hand turn and everything else. And I will say one thing I did, th this actually is probably not quite as wild and woolly as the real camel. Um, you can see like it, it's fairly straight and sedate and that's because just for flight gear purposes I put in just a little bit more damping right around like if you're doing straight and steady flight it's a little bit more damped if you look at real camels you'll see a lot of sort of you know instead of straight and steady flight you'll see a lot of this or a lot of yaw sort of bouncing back and forth a little bit in yaw and uh, we'll see I may add that back in in a future version but if you're actually uh, running this to fly, say, against an AI scenario or whatever. It really drives you crazy if it's just sort of bouncing all around. And, and it's, I think, much harder to control with our um, sort of uh, cheap plastic joysticks than it probably would be if you were flying a real camel with, uh, with sort of the real controls that were really attached to the aileron and so on. Um, the other thing you'll notice right off, and, and some people have commented on this right away with uh, uh, Camel being named the, the aircraft of the month for me and different people flying it and trying it out, is what happens when you use the aileron. So I'm going to put on some right uh, aileron here to do a right roll, and you immediately see there's a huge yaw to the left. And uh, I'll straighten up again here. <coughs> if I do left aileron, to make a left roll, then there's a you know huge yaw to the right, and this again is something that's that's exactly reported by uh, the pilots who who flew this, particularly the modern. You know, I don't think the people back in the day probably knew the difference, but um, the modern pilots who fly the Camel will immediately say, "Oh my gosh, it's got so much adverse yaw," 
and it, you can see that's a huge amount a and once it go like like every aircraft nowadays has adverse yaw right but but it might be like adverse yaw will take you you know half a degree the opposite direction so it's like barely noticeable this is like a huge amount of adverse yaw and once it goes over there i mean it stays and that's exactly what the camel pilots report is like the adverse yaw takes you in the opposite direction a long way and it just stays there so the only way to make a turn um, you know is you gotta either just do it with the rudder and here here's a nice rudder turn and actually a lot of camel pilots reported um, that they would just um, basically steer with the rudder which is interesting because of course that's exactly what they tell us not to do now with a modern aircraft but um, apparently some pilots would har hardly touch the ailerons um, so here's a rudder uh, turn back and then I'll rudder turn the other direction uh, and you notice it's quite slow especially this uh, the right roll is against the torque of the engine so um, it's much slower um, but the other way you can either do a straight rudder uh, uh, roll which some uh, pilots apparently did or you can coordinate the two so that as you roll right you also and see there I'm able to, to use my right uh, my left ailerons to make a little left roll and I don't yaw all over the place but one of the things that uh, pilots observed uh, when they flew this is that like in the case of the ailerons we think of ailerons as something that, that just makes you roll today and um, it actually has two side effects one is this adverse yaw so there's a left roll with a, with a huge rightward yaw um, so it has three effects it rolls you it yaws you in the opposite direction and then also take a look at the um, speed over here as soon as I uh, do like a strong leftward roll notice what happens to my speed it, it dropped <laughs> a long ways and that's because these huge and then of course it made me uh, go into a bit of a stall there because I dropped so much but the, it's got these four huge barn door ailerons um, in the back see how big they are um, that's way larger if you look at the the uh, wing I mean the ailerons take up like a, an eighth of a wing of each wing and there's four of them there's not just two so this has got like much much larger uh, aileron area than you know any comparable uh, plane uh, today and then they're they're way out on the edge of the wing which they tell me um, get all this drag from because it's out of the wing tip so you get all the, the wing tip vortex and all that stuff and this really interferes with it um, and you'll see like as I do uh, roll one way you get yaw the other way and if you ever watch uh, one of these historical aircraft uh, biplane like this um, like at an air show you can notice that as soon as they put on that uh, roll you'll see the you know huge yaw in the opposite direction and uh, looks just exactly like uh, what we're seeing here sort of a yaw in, in sort of the wrong way <laughs> And you can actually sort of see it from the ground. And now I've crashed, so that's a good way to wrap up this this first one. But that's a little intro to the camel and what it does and why it's a pretty unusual and interesting aircraft to fly. It's, it's really not like uh, any aircraft that, that we would design today.